It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. A neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Well, good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to my house. It's so nice to see you. And since we can't be in person with you, I'm glad you can be able to make it to my home. So I've got a whole lot of cooking that I need to be doing today. Get rid of this shawl. Yes. This is going to be fun. See if I can tie this, OK? But today, we're going to talk about being safe in the kitchen. And, you know, when we're cooking, one of the biggest things is, is we got to remember is the stove is very hot, right? And so we got to make sure to stay away from it. And we don't want anything to, to be on the stove that can catch on fire. We want the handles to stick out along on top of the counter because we don't want them to, somebody to grab them and, and get hurt. Oh, hi, Flicker. Fuck you. I, I'm doing all right, Mrs. D, but my feathers are starting to fringe. Your feathers are starting to fringe? What's up with that? Grandma, we're here. Oh, well, hello, Al Alice. You know that's not the proper way to take but care Grandma, of your Grandma, Sarah today at school. Come. Sarah? She sat I with Jared. And it was a disaster. Oh, and this is my friend, Augie. Well, hello, Hi. Augie. How are you today? I'm good. How are well, you? Great. Are you guys... Oh, Alice, is that... Should we be messing around the stove? What's the distance so we should stay from a stove? Walk three feet. That's right, Flicker, because guess what happened to Flicker today, Augie? Oh, what happened to Flicker? Flicker singed her feathers. <gasps> and if you singe your feathers, I bet that makes it pretty hard to fly, doesn't it, Flicker? Oh, well, yeah. Are you trying to fly? Not so good these days. So you, so you just kind of walk? Well, yeah. And jump? Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and wobble. <laughs> so, all right, you know what? I think we have a game. Oh, do we? A game? You guys like games? I love games. I love well, let's, games. Let's check out our hot and cold game. Okay. And, and I know you guys just came from school, but I'm going to give you a test. You ready? Uh. All right, let's. So, what is that hot or is that cold? That's hot. Oh, that's hot. Really? And, hot. and is that something that we should play around? No. no. Campfires. Yeah, in fact, our firefighter for the Forest Service, Rex, what does he tell us? We, how do we properly extinguish a campfire? With lots of water. Lots of water. It's and then drown. You have to touch it. Stir. Oh, yes. And feel. Exactly. You got to make sure that, because if it's, if we can't touch it, it's still too hot, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Let's see. What's our next pitch? Oh. Oh. Refrigerator, right? That's cold. That's Is it, cold. But can they, sometimes, does the motor work get hot? Do we play with the extension cords or the electric cords? No. no we're not supposed to. And do we climb in the fridge? That's not, not safe, to. is it? And what else do we got? Let's see. What's our next one? Oh. That's hot. Hot drinks? Coffee, yeah. tea? Things that like that? That spilled on me one time and burnt me. What do you do for ah. a burn like that? What if it was super serious? 
Call 911. Exactly. And because you want to make sure to, to get the emergency medical help you need, right? Yeah. Because if it's all over your body, is that serious? Yes, that's serious. Oh. And that number? Yes, Augie? I know how to call 911. You do? I sure do. And, and what, what, who's on the other end of, because do you know who's on the other end of that 911? Well, actually, I met someone on the other end of that. You did? Yeah! Oh my goodness, were they awesome? They were awesome! Nice! But now, let's say you just have a minor burn, and it's just, what do you do? Put lots of cool water on it. Lots of cool water, exactly, right. Yeah. All right, let's look at our next picture. Oh, that looks like a big TV. Huh. With a nice, it looks like an Arizona sunset. What do you think? Yeah. Sure. We'll call it good. So, it, yeah. can a TV get hot? Ooh. Maybe. A little bit, right? Should we climb up on the TV stand? No. No, because they could fall off and hurt people, right? Yeah. Absolutely. What's our next one? Oh. <gasps> Hola? What, what do you think? I think he's hot. Oh, not like, you can't date yet? <laughs> not that kind of Grandma. hot? Oh, I, but Olaf is pretty cool, isn't he? Really cool. And, and literally cool, isn't he? Yeah. He's like the coldest thing around, because if he gets in the sunshine, he's going to start to he's melt. He's going to melt. Yeah. But, yeah, but so can we get out in the snow and play and have a good time and keep from getting burned? Yeah. yeah. It's not going to burn us, huh? Unless no. the sun. We have to put sunscreen on. We still got to use sunscreen. Absolutely. Good point, Alice. Nice. What else do we got? Oh, squawk. Fla uh, flicker. Oh, my goodness. Can't even think straight today. We got a pan on the stove, and I think it's cooking uh, some applesauce. Do you like applesauce? Oh, yeah, I love applesauce. Mm -hmm. So do you think a pan on the stove is hot or cold? Well, can I stick a feather in it to find out? No. Well, what do you think, Augie? That's how you get burned. Oh, do I think that's how your feathers got burned. Earlier. Is that how you got singed? That, that might be a possibility. Yeah, that yeah. being on that stove and getting those feathers singed, that's not a good thing. What else do we? Oh, this one's interesting. Let's talk about this one. What about the table? Is the table hot or cold? Depends on Ooh. if there's something on it. Right. And what's behind it in the chair? A lamp. What about oh. the lamp? You think it's... It could get hot. The light bulb could get hot. Absolutely. Yeah. Should we put stuff over, like my shawl? Should we put my shawl over the top of that lamp? No. No. Don't put things on there. The lampshade is designed to be on there, and that's okay, right? Yeah. yeah. And the chair? It's probably cold, huh? Yeah. Until you sit in it for a while, then it's just kind of warm, right? Yeah. All right. And let's see. What else did we got? Oh, this is... And we're coming into winter time. And who likes a nice, warm wood? Yeah. Oh, I do. Are they comfy and cozy? Yeah. But do, same thing like a kitchen stove. Do we, what's our, how far should we stay away from that wood stove? Three feet. Exactly, three feet. Now, uh, my feet might be a little big, so it's kind of easy to say one, two, three. But if you take three steps, three regular steps, is that going to be three feet? No. Close enough? Maybe well, make it four a, for just safety. Four to be safe. Oh, I like that. That's that's a good thinking. All right, so we need to stay away. And, and who puts wood into the fire? Do the, do the little tiny kids? No. No, it's probably not safe. Huh? We need to leave that for the grown-ups. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, here's a good picture. We got a picture of an iron. One standing up. And the other one with the hot part laying down. Why has it got the red X on the laying down one? Because Should we leave hot. it like that? No, no, it can catch on fire. Exactly, because even if it's not plugged in, can it still possibly be hot? Because yeah. maybe it just got unplugged, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to store it properly. Well, you know, I think we need to get back to cooking. Or actually, I think Augie had a song about hot and cold things, didn't you? I did. I almost forgot about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, sing it to my grandma. <clears throat> Stop. Don't touch. 
You'll burn your hand on the stove top. When you see the red light, there's your time to stare. Stop and turn and be aware. Stop. Don't touch. You'll burn your hand on the stove top. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. That was and, good, Augie. And if you're going to be, be getting stuff off of the stove, you need to use an oven mitt, right? Yeah. You pull the stuff out of the oven because that helps keep you from getting burned, huh? Yeah. Hey, hey, Augie. Yes, Flicker? I've just made up my own song. You want to hear it? Of course. All right. <clears throat> That's right, clear them pipes. Let's do it. <laughs> when mom is cooking, cooking in the kitchen, you have to watch out for the stove. Sometimes things stick out and can be dangerous. So be careful where you go. The pots they bubble, the pans they sizzle. And everything smells really good. But keep your hands off or they will burn you. And that would really hurt. Oh my goodness, that is so awesome. Thank you, Flicker. That Come on, was... Augie. Bye, Grandma. Mom's here. Oh, oh. I don't have my backpack. Let's go, Augie. Bye, okay. Augie. Bye. Bye, Grandma. Well, thank you, boys and girls. It was so nice having you here with us today while we were talking about fire safety in the kitchen. And I hope that you'll come to our house some other day and we can talk about more safety topics. But always remember that you are important and you can be what you want to be and always be safe anytime you're around any kind of hot item, especially fires, the stove, and all of that. Be safe and don't get burned. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Hi everyone, I'm Officer Nancy Huser with the Arizona Game and Fish Department. A lot of people come up to the White Mountains to recreate. Things they get to do are hiking, biking, bird watching, animal watching, and a lot of people like to use their off-highway vehicle. So when we're out patrolling, we're going to make sure that you guys are being safe, and especially kids. So I'm going to show you what happens here. Reese is riding in the ATV and she, or UTV and she has her helmet on and her seatbelt on. So when I take her out of her seatbelt, And as you can see, Reese is five, and she's wearing a safe helmet to be out riding. On the back of the helmet is the DOT, Department of Transportation, that says this helmet is made to protect her noggin in case she falls out of or gets run over by an ATV. So, and you gotta make sure the helmet fits the person that's wearing it, like Reese. We're gonna take her helmet off, and we're gonna show you that if she has too big of a helmet, it doesn't fit her, and it's an unsafe thing. Like this one is really a big helmet. Again, it's a DOT helmet and it's, it's made to protect her, but if it's too big and doesn't fit her head, then she has a problem with neck and head injuries. And it doesn't do any good to put a big helmet on a kid's head if it doesn't fit. As you can see, it, it wobbles around, it's so loose, she can pull it off her head. Is it heavy? Yeah. One thing you gotta make sure is when you're out riding, and kids, you got to tell your parents this because it helps so the parents understand, is that these bicycle helmets, now Reese loves her bicycle helmet, doesn't say DOT on the back, but it's really made for bicycles. So if you have a 20 pound bicycle and you fall off your bike and hit your head, it's going to protect you. You're not going that fast and everything and it won't crush. I'll let you hold that. Some of these bicycle helmets though, or all bicycle helmets, when you realize these machines weigh around 1,800 pounds, an ATV can be 700 pounds. And this is what happens to a helmet when it gets run over by, by an ATV or UTV. They're not made for the high impact crash and for the heavy machines. So always make sure you tell your parents 
Bicycle helmets are great for my bike and my skateboard, but not on an off-highway vehicle, okay? There's so many other things people like to do when they're out recreating, like maybe this beautiful lake going out on the lake. So Reese, when she wants to go out, she might want to ride on this kayak here. So the important thing is, is that you get the right life jacket for the right size person. And it has to say Coast Guard approved, okay? That's another big thing you gotta remember, Coast Guard approved. If Reese were to put this life jacket on and go out in the water, it's a pretty big life jacket. This life jacket is made for a 90 pound person. Do you think Reese is over 90 pounds or under 90 pounds? You're right, she's under 90 pounds. So if Reese has this life jacket on and she goes overboard off the kayak and I reach over to grab her to save her, I'm grabbing for the life jacket. And as I grab the life jacket, but that's what's gonna happen. She's gonna fall out of the life jacket and then she's gonna float down and it won't save her. So the Right thing to do is to get the right, right size life jacket. Now for Reese's size, this is the right size life jacket. We'll stick it on her. And then we have to make sure that all of the snaps, you can't just go one snap. You gotta make sure all three snaps are secured because otherwise the life jacket doesn't do its job. It won't protect you. So for, for Reese's age, she's small enough that this life jacket actually has a strap that goes between her legs that's gonna help keep her in the life jacket. So if Reese were to fall out of, out of the kayak, I would reach over and grab the life jacket and I would pick her up and look, she stays in the life jacket. Now, I see a lot of these where people have their kids out with them, the little armbands, right? They go on their arm, their floaties. These are not Coast Guard approved. This will not save your child. So these things are just just to look at. I wouldn't put them on a boat. They're not legal. So if I were to stop you on a boat or a kayak, then you would get a ticket for this because it's not Coast Guard approved for safety for your child. Now, if Reese and I go on this kayak together, I've got to make sure that there's enough life jackets on this kayak for everybody that's on board. Two of us could easily fit on this kayak. I got to make sure I have a jacket that fits me. If I have this jacket, it's not going to work too small for me. So we got to make sure that both of us have a jacket that fit us while we're out having a good time on the lakes. doesn't exist. And today, we'll be interviewing a dispatcher. A dispatcher is a person who answers the phone when you call 911. Let's talk to one and ask her some questions. Hello. Hi, Augie. So, what's the first thing we should all know when calling 911? Well, the first thing you should know is that when you call 911, it needs to be in a real emergency. Oh, okay. Do you know what a real emergency is? Well, I think I do. Well, a real emergency would be like a fire or um, somebody is really, really sick or there's an unwelcome stranger in your home. Oh. Those sound kind of scary. Oh, they can be very scary, but they don't happen every day. And when they do happen, well, it's just good for you to know what to do. Oh, okay. So, how do we call 911? Well, to call 911, you need to know the number. Do you know the number? Um. I don't think so. Really? Okay, say it after me. It's nine. Nine. One. 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 Oh. Yeah, it's an easy number. And it's an easy number so that when something bad happens, you can remember it really easily. Oh. 
But also remember on a cell phone, you want to dial 911 and push the send button. Well, so what is a real emergency? Just to get it across. That's a great question. Okay, I'll, t I'll test you. Let's see how you do. Oh, I don't like tests. Oh, you'll do fine. If you're in the kitchen and you cut your finger, is that a real emergency? Mm, yes. Well, it could be, but if a Band-Aid heals it, or mom and dad can help you with that, it's not really a reason to call 911. Um, how about if your house is on fire? Oh, well, we're flammable, so yes. Yeah, yeah, fires are a big one, and the sooner you call us, the sooner we can get help out to you. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. If you're bored and you just want someone to talk to? Mm, no. No, that's a good answer because we have a very important job to help people. And if we're just sitting on the phone talking to somebody, it kind of ties up the lines. Oh. So it's important, as much as we like to talk to people and help people, we can't just sit on the phone and talk to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see, last one. Um, what if your sister is choking and she can't breathe? Oh, yeah, that sounds pretty important. That's an important one, yeah. So that's a good one to call 911 for. And also, if you ever have a doubt, you can always ask an adult if it's something that you should call 911 for. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, what else do we have to know? Well, I guess a good thing to know is that when you call 911, the first question we'll ask you is, where do you live? Where is your emergency? Okay. Do cool. you know your address? <clears throat> <clears throat> la 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 la. <clears throat> My address is 194 Tumbleway. Da 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 da. That's very good, but why did you sing it? That's how I remember things. Oh. You should try it sometime. I will try it sometime. That's a great way to remember your address. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a catchy tune. Yeah. Yeah, good job. Um. But sometimes an emergency happens and you're not at home. Do you know what you have to do then? Oh, no, I don't. Okay, the important thing is to pay attention to where you are. Um, street names help us, or you could tell us you're across the street from McDonald's, or you're at a gas station, oh. or you're at the skate park. Places like that, we can help us find out where to go to find you. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. So, can we just hang up after that? Oh, no, your job's not done yet. Oh. Yeah, a lot of times we need you to continue to answer questions for us. That way we can figure out who we're sending to help you. You might need a fireman, or you might need a police officer, or you might even need an EMT. Oh, wait, what's an EMT? Well, an EMT is an emergency medical technician. They're the people that work on the ambulances. So oh. when you have a medical emergency, uh -huh. that's who we send. Well, that's cool. Yeah. But you still can't hang up. Once no? we send somebody, we might need you to do some stuff for us, like unlock your front door oh. or put your animals away somewhere. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. Once we know that somebody is there to help you, then we can hang up because our job is done. Awesome. Yeah. So is that all we need to know? That is all you need to know. Wow. That was a lot to cover. <laughs> Maybe we should go over it one more time. Sure. So know your address. Okay, address. Only call in a real emergency. Okay, only real emergency. Yeah. And make sure to answer all the questions and help out as much as you can when you're talking to the dispatcher. Of course. Well, thank you very much, Miss Dispatcher. Thank you, Augie. <laughs> well, that's it for today. This is Augie signing out. I'll see you all later. Bye!
everybody, my name is Kristen and I'm with the Arizona Burn Foundation. And I am Susan and I'm from the Navajo County Schools Department. And today we want to talk to you about kitchen safety. The kitchen is probably the most dangerous room in your entire house. And this stove or oven is probably the most dangerous thing in your entire house. Susan, do you know why this is so dangerous? I would think because it gets really hot. It does get really hot. And you know what happens when something gets really, really hot? It can burn you. So very, very, very important. I want to talk about the safety zone around the oven. So today, when you go home, you have homework. Your homework is to take some duct tape or take some tape and make a circle, a safety zone around your oven. The way that you're gonna do that is you're gonna stand right in front of it and you're gonna walk three steps. One, two, three. This right here is how far you should always stay away from the oven. I have this really cool rope here that shows I should always stay this far away from my oven. And the reason for that is because this oven gets really, really hot and it can burn you. It even burns adults when we're not super, super careful. So remember today when you go home, take some tape and put it down on the floor in that big circle around your oven. And then teach yourself, teach your brothers, your sisters, your mom, your dad, your pets to stay outside of that circle. That is the safety zone. We never, ever, ever want to play with the buttons, play with the knobs, play with any pots or pans, or play with the drawer. Susan, do you have any questions? I don't, well, you know, sometimes my oven is not hot. Oh, that's such a good point. Yeah. There are things in your house, and especially in your kitchen, that we call sometimes hot. And that means when you're using them, they're hot, and when you're not using them, they're not. Those sometimes hot objects are very, very sneaky and they can burn you so fast and so easy. So let's just pretend and let's just think about those sometimes hot objects as always hot. So just pretend that the oven is always, always, always hot and never, ever, ever get close to it. Some other objects in your kitchen that are sometimes hot are the dishwasher, the microwave, the toaster. Can you think of any other ones? You know, sometimes when I wash dishes, my faucet gets really hot. That's another good one. The water that comes out of the sink, sometimes hot, sometimes not. So remember, let's just think, always hot, always stay away. You know what, Susan? I think I have a song that goes along with this. How fun. <laughs> I can touch it, it's pure gold. This stove, it's way hot. Should I touch it? Sure not. Hanging out in the kitchen, waiting for my food. Staying away from the hot stuff. Gotta watch myself, I'm so good. That's hot, don't touch. It could hurt you very much. Hot, don't touch. The kitchen stove, oven and such, that's hot. Don't touch. Stay away, it's clutch, that's hot. Don't touch. And I'll be safe from burns. Break it down. All right, dude, we gotta start finding some loot fast before the storm starts. Yeah, I think I saw some good stuff over there by Tomato Town as we were gliding down. Oh, look, it's a treasure chest. Yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. Let's go see if there's anything good inside. Oh, look, it's a shield potion. Did you slurp it without me? I'm sorry, but look, look, there's another one for Thank you. you. There for you go. Me one. Here, look, put them in my pack. 
Oh, look, a med kit. Oh, a med kit. That's nice. Um, this is all good stuff, but what's this? Um, in all my days of playing, I have never seen anything like that before. Do you think it'll be helpful if we uh, take it? I've heard of this before from a YouTuber. I think it's called Mary Joanna or something. I heard it can cause health decrease and even shield decrease, but worst of all, game lag. I don't think we should take this. We got any chance of winning. Yikes, yeah, game lag is the worst. We better not take it, especially if we don't know what it can do. Oh, I think I hear some people coming. We better go hide behind the bushes. They look pog dogs and noobs left this in the chest. I know, they might as well hand us a Victor Royale right now. Yeah, but what is this? I thought it was vaulted a few seasons ago. Don't I remember it. Same with this. Must be something new. I don't know, but if we want to get the dub, I say we take it. Well, all right. Let's get out of here. Totally froze. <laughs> Take the L. Yeah, if they called us noobs. <laughs> hey, you know, we just watched that skit, um, and the players, they took some marijuana, and you notice as soon as they took, put that uh, marijuana and those pipes in their bags, they started to have game lag, and then they um, froze, and they weren't able to finish their game, and actually lost their game, and the other players were able to come in and, and win the game. So in real life, Officer Butler, if you do marijuana, how is that going to affect your game lag in life? Exactly. Just like we saw in this skit, um, the game lag affected those players. And it can affect us in, in life, too. It can start lagging our, our life academically. Um, typically, the IQ of any marijuana users will drop from six to eight points from other teenagers their age. Um, so it can affect you in your academics, in your memory retention, in your IQ. It can also affect you physically. It can start to delay development. It can um, delay your reaction time to different things. And those are different lags, if you will, that will happen uh, if someone is using marijuana. Okay, you talk about IQ points. Um, how many IQ points do you lose? Around six to eight. Six to eight. That's a lot, if, especially if you're not a genius. That's a lot of points to, <laughs> exactly. to lose. So, Officer Tyra, um, what are some of the risks of youth using marijuana? Well, the biggest thing that comes to mind is the legal aspect. You know, it's, right now it's currently against the law to use or possess marijuana. Um, so they can be arrested, you know, spend the night in jail. And, you know, then away from the law side of it, you also have other risks of losing family members, you know, I, I've met many people over my career that lost their entire family because their family didn't want anything to do with them because they were hooked on drugs. So that's, you know, really stay away from marijuana and, and you know, it's the biggest risk is you know, losing your family and going to jail. So what are some of the risks um, at school, you see at school, so what happens if a, if a youth gets caught using marijuana? So if they get caught with marijuana on campus, it's an automatic 180-day suspension. Okay. They're gone for 180 days. Okay. So, and then trying to get into another school is hard, because then they have to go, you know, the schools communicate to each other, and if you get kicked out of one school, the other school is going to call up, you know, the other school and say, hey, what happened? and they find out you were doing drugs or you're caught with drugs, they may not, they don't have to accept you. Right, okay. So, I mean, they, then they could be left of trying to find an online school or, or something so they can get their education. Okay, so do you feel like that um, if youth do marijuana that it affects um, them staying in school? Are they more likely to drop out or stay in school? Do you see kids dropping out of school? You know, generally once they get suspended, for a long-term suspension, I don't see him again. Okay. So I don't know what really happens to him, you know, after that point. Okay. So it's hard for me to say. So Officer Butler, what are some of the short-term effects of marijuana use? Yeah, so some of the short-term effects are, um, now keep in mind that the marijuana that's around today is a lot more potent and stronger than it was, you know, maybe 20 years ago. Um, so you're gonna feel the effects a lot more quickly and maybe more severe. Um, but some of those short time effects or short term effects rather can be loss of coordination. Um, you feel delayed, you feel maybe um, like you're having an outside body experience type of thing, if you will. Um, you can start to have anxiety. And if you take a larger dose, you can actually have panic that can lead to 
um, you know, stress and different things like that, paranoia, different things. So, right, those are some pretty, pretty severe yeah. <laughs> effects. Um, what about long-term effects? I mean, again, memory mm -hmm. um, that can affect you for ever. You know, if you're high at the time and something happens and you're not going to remember it, so you're missing out on a lot of activities and stuff like that with family and friends that you're not going to remember. And you know, a friend could, hey, don't you remember that time at the park? No, you know, because that person was high. Um, some other long-term effects is, you know, if you get arrested, that's going to follow you for the rest of your life. Um, a lot of times, the first time somebody is arrested for marijuana, it's a misdemeanor. After that, it can become a felony. And that felony will stay on your record for your entire life. Right. Um, so trying to get a good paying job. Um, so if, you, if the person prefers to work at a lower paying job for all their life, you know, you're, you got these people that are doing marijuana and they, they could get stuck doing those jobs. So a lot of jobs now do background checks, you know, these high end jobs do background checks and they won't hire you if they see you have especially a felony. Okay. What about a gateway drug? Do you think marijuana is a gateway drug? Yeah, absolutely. It can definitely lead down to more trouble in the future and things like that. Um, Typically, we see a lot of people who are unfortunately involved in drugs or trying to recover from drugs. A lot of times it does start with marijuana or it starts with some sort of event in their life leading to marijuana and so on. So absolutely. Okay. So that opens the gate up mm -hmm. to other drugs. Absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for watching. And remember, if you don't want to lag in the game of life, don't do marijuana. have a flashlight. Oh, good. Somebody at the door? <laughs> Who is it? This is Rhonda with Emergency Management. Oh. Okay. Hi. Hi. My name's Rhonda hi. with Navajo County Emergency Management. Hi, Rhonda. Oh, hi, guys? Rhonda. Good, how are you? Oh, I was just checking up on you guys since the power went out. Yeah. yeah. We're all good. Do you guys happen to have a ready kit? Um, What's ready a kit? ready kit? Oh, wait, I think we do. It's right over here. Oh, oh awesome. Uh, oh, cool. Uh, uh, this is awesome. So you guys are prepared. Let's see what you guys got in this. Whoa, that's a whole lot of stuff. It is. So you guys want to make sure you have a blanket, right? Because if the electricity goes out and the power goes out, you might not have heat, right? Yeah. yeah. And I hate the cold. We've got to stay warm. And sometimes when you don't know when the power goes out, you guys don't have water to your sinks. So you guys got to make sure you have water. Oh. Always. Good yeah, thing to remember. Stay hydrated. Yeah. Anything else in here that's important? Oh. How about one of these? You guys know what one of these are? Oh, oh a fire extinguisher. Sure, that's right? very important, right? Wow. And this is very important. Oh, very important. Very important. Especially yeah. in the year 2020. Yes. Especially. <laughs> and this is pretty important too. What would this be for? Can Open open cans. Good job. Oh. Yeah. Do you guys have cats at home? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. That's most important too because what are your cats going to eat? If something oh. goes... Oh, they got to have food. They got to have food, right? Yeah. Good job. And then you have all kinds of snacks, plates, paper towels. Another thing that's important too is some sunscreen. Oh. And I seen that you guys had some medications in here, but that's for mom and dad to, to make sure that you guys do good with this stuff, right? Yeah. Right. All right. Looks good. So, 
you guys get to have some lunch, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good job. So what else do you think should be in your ready kit? A clock. A clock yeah, or a, a watch. Clock. Or something. A watch. Yeah. yeah, how about medical information? Yeah. Important That's phone good. numbers? Mom yeah. and dad's? Grandma's? Your addresses? That's a good idea. Med kits? Yes, a first aid kit would be number one. Medical good job. pamphlets? Yeah. So good job. You guys did really good. Yeah. Yay! All right. Okay. You guys did well. So when mom and dad get home, you can make sure that you tell them that you went through this and everything looked good. Okay. All right. Well, good job, guys. Proud of you. Navajo County Emergency Management is proud of you guys. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. You Bye, too. Have a good day. You have a good day too. See ya. Hey guys, my name is Clint. I'm the pre-hospital coordinator here at Summit Healthcare Regional Medical Center. This is my friend Eddie. Hi. And these are our friends Clay and Debbie and their mom Jody. Hi. We're going to talk to you a little bit today about shopping cart safety. Whoa, Eddie, look at the way that they're riding in that cart. Is that safe? Oh my gosh, Eddie. Look at those kids now. Should they be riding in a cart standing up? No. Oh my gosh, Eddie, look at those kids now. Hi, my name's Jody. I'm the trauma educator at Summit Healthcare as well as an ER nurse. Every year we see serious injuries caused by unsafe shopping cart use. Be safe when using a shopping cart. Sit in the seat how it's designed with your feet poking through and use the belt. Click it until, it until you hear it. Keep your noggin safe, your fingers safe, and your hair out of the wheels by using your shopping cart how you're supposed to. Hey everybody. Eddie and I just wanna say please don't be like our friends Clay and Debbie and end up in our ER visiting Jody and I. Please be safe. Bye. Bye. So I'm Rex Thompson with the U.S. Forest Service on the Apache Sickerys National Forest on the Lakeside Ranger District. I work in fire prevention. So after a long day of out hiking, mountain biking, fishing, hunting, riding your OHV, we like to come back to our campsite and either have a cooking fire or a campfire. So one thing we want to make sure you folks are aware of when you have a campfire is you want to have a good clear area around your campfire. So if embers do fly out, it's not going to catch the vegetation on fire. We do need to make sure that we have water and a shovel on hand and plenty of water to extinguish your campfire. If you're near a lake, you can bring a bucket so you can go get water from the lake and extinguish your campfire. Uh, one thing with campfires and cooking fires is they aren't something to play around, just like cooking on your stove at home. So you need to make sure that you don't have kids playing, jumping over the fire. Uh, when we're gonna go to extinguish the campfire, we have a method that we use drown, stir, and feel. You need to drown it with water, stir it up really good, and feel it with the back of your hand. We never leave our campfires unattended. You need to have a responsible adult in attendance at all times. So Nancy's gonna come over and give us a hand extinguishing our campfire. And she's gonna use the drown, stir, and feel method. And like I said, you need to make sure you have adequate amount of water to extinguish your campfire.
so one thing, dirt is not adequate to just put on your campfire and just smother it. You need to actually make sure that you're drowning it and stirring it and peeling it. And see how she put the back of her hand over there? She felt that it was still warm. So she needs to repeat that process again until the fire is extinguished. So as you can see, she had felt it again with the back of her hand and it's still warm. So she's gonna use her second jug of water to extinguish the campfire. So now we've extinguished our campfire and we can leave for the day, whether it's to go to bed for the night or go out and enjoy our day. So both Nancy and I just want to make sure that you care for the land, take care of the land and enjoy the national forest and leave it for others to enjoy as well. Thank you. Please, please, won't you be my neighbor? <laughs>